So spring is the best time of year to target redfish here in Tampa Bay. And with the water beginning to warm up, what better time to give you my tips on where to go, what to throw, and what gear to use to catch springtime redfish. What's going on everyone? My name is Brent Shermer and welcome to my series I like to call Just the Tips, where I'll give you my strategies to catch different species of fish around here in Florida. Whether you're new to fishing or you've been fishing your whole life, I believe it is beneficial to try and learn from what works for other people to try and make yourself a more well-rounded fisherman. So today marks the beginning of Tips Tuesdays, where I'll be posting a different Just the Tips video every other week starting today. So if you're new to this channel and want to stay up to date on my different videos, make sure you subscribe. Also, if you have any tips you want to give yourself on this topic, please leave a comment down below. So my tips and techniques are what works for me around here in Tampa, but I want to hear what works for other people. So if we could all come together and make this a one-stop shop for redfish knowledge, that would be awesome. So leave a comment down below. All right, so let's get into today's topic. So I'm going to break this down into the three normal categories where I'll talk about where you should be fishing, what baits you should be throwing, and what gear you should be using to catch these fish. So the first step of catching any species of fish is understanding where you should be fishing. You can catch redfish year round in Tampa Bay, but as the water starts to warm up, especially now in like early March, the redfish really seem to turn on. So when I envision redfishing, the first thing that comes to my head is just a bunch of tailing redfish in shallow water on a grass flat and now is a good time of year to do that. So grass flats are one of the best places to target redfish, especially this time of year, just because of the abundance of crustaceans and small bay fish that you can find there. So at low tide, what happens is these redfish get kind of pushed out of the grass flats and get pushed into these deeper pothole areas. So these redfish will be in these deeper areas on the low tide, and as the tide starts coming up, they'll follow the water out and start moving toward the shore. And what they want to do is they want to be the first ones to get to these crustaceans that were safe during the low tide. These redfish will push themselves up real shallow to get after these baits. And that's when you'll see their backs out of the water and then their tails out of the water as they're face down in the grass trying to find some crabs or shrimp or anything. So as the tide continues to rise, these redfish will push closer and closer toward these mangrove systems. And what they'll do is they'll patrol the outside of the roots looking for different baits until the water is high enough for them to get back into the roots. Once they're back in there, they're virtually impossible to catch. That's why it's best to fish mangroves about midway through a high or a low tide. Low tide, they're not there because there's not enough water and high tide, they're back up into the mangroves. So during like peak high tide, there's two places I like to try fishing. You could go to either an oyster bar or you could go to residential docks. So it's really the same concept with an oyster bar. During the low tide, the redfish can't get up there because there's not enough water. So all the prey, the crustaceans and everything is safe. But during a high tide, the redfish can get up there and they're gonna go feed on all the little crabs and shrimp that hide amongst the oysters. So it makes oyster bars really good during high tide. If you've watched my past two Just a Tips videos, you know how much I love fishing residential docks. And for redfish, it's no different. So the structure, one, gives the redfish cover, and two, also attracts crustaceans and small bait fish. So it makes a very good place to fish. So the biggest benefit to fishing the docks is also its biggest drawback. Big redfish love wrapping you up and breaking you off on the structure, on the pilings and everything. If you're gonna fish a dock, you gotta expect to lose some fish. So if I was going out and I was trying to make a day out of red fishing, what I would do is check the tides Go fish some of these deeper potholes on the grass flats during the lowest part of the tide. Follow the fish up on the grass flats during the rising tide. Get up toward the mangroves, fish that for a little bit. And during the high tide, I would go back and fish some oyster bars or docks. And then if you wanna fish the outgoing tide, all you have to do is just reverse that order. Start at the oyster bar or docks at highest tide, go down to the mangroves and then go down to the grass flats and the deep potholes. All right, now it's time to talk about bait. So the different baits, rigs, and tackle that I'll be talking about will all be listed down in the description. When redfish are feeding, they're willing to bite a variety of baits, including live bait, artificial lures, and even flies. I'm not gonna lie, I really don't know much when it comes to fly fishing, so I'm not even gonna cover that too much. If you have some fly fishing knowledge regarding redfish that you'd like to share, 
please leave it as a comment down below. However, I will say that using a fly that resembles either a small crab, shrimp, or bait fish will probably be your best options. For live bait, shrimp, greenbacks, and pinfish are your best options. I prefer using shrimp when I'm using live bait for the simple fact that it's so easy to get. You can just go to the tackle shop and you're done. What I like to do is either hook the shrimp back by the tail or sometimes I'll even bite the tail off and rig my circle hook through the shrimp almost like a soft plastic. This makes it virtually weedless and I think it puts more scent into the water. However, if you can cast net some greenbacks or white bait or pilchards or whatever you want to call them, that works great as well. As far as the live pinfish, I personally haven't had much luck using them as bait for redfish, but I have heard good things from other people. However, I have had good luck using pinfish as cut bait. Also, ladyfish and mullet work well as cut bait. As far as rigging goes, I like to use a 2 or a 3 0 circle hook on a 2 foot piece of 20 or 30 pound fluoro leader. Redfish mostly feed near the bottom, so you may want to put a small split shot a couple inches above your hook depending on your situation. For artificial, any lure made to look like a shrimp or a small bait fish should work. My top three redfish lures are the DOA Cal, DOA Shrimp, and Mirror Lure Miradine. If you've been watching my videos lately, you know how the DOA Cal has been my by far favorite lure. I've caught everything from trout, snook, tarpon, and a bunch of reds on it. The way I like to rig it is on a 1 8 ounce jig head tied to a two foot piece of 20 pound fluoro leader. All right, now it's time to talk tackle. If I'm fishing in a situation like a grass flat where there isn't much worry of breaking off, I'll use my 2500 Shimano Sustain on a St. Croix 7 foot Avid Inshore Light Action Rod and on there I have 10 pound braid. This setup is so much fun, it's very light and sensitive but still has a little bit of backbone so I can fight those bigger fish out in the open. However, it would be a challenge to try and catch a big red near some structure without breaking off. That's why when I'm fishing around docks or mangroves, I like to use my 4000 Shimano Stratic CI4 on a St. Croix 7 foot Mojo Inshore medium light action rod and on there I have 20 pound braid. This combo has some more drag and backbone to it so I can pull those redfish away from the structure before they even have a chance to wrap me up and break me off. So that's going to do it for today's episode of Just the Tips. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, that would mean a lot. If you want to stay up to date on my different videos, make sure you subscribe. And please, if you have any questions or any tips you want to give yourself on this topic, please leave a comment down below. Let's all work together to become better fishermen. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.